Good morning, everyone. I hope you guys had a nice weekend and that you're all fired up for the new week that's beginning. Uh, so this morning, this morning, I want to continue uh, our series on spiritual disciplines. And my theme this morning is be transformed by the word. You know, we're talking about the word. Uh, th that's the first discipline that we're looking at. And uh, I believe as from Thursday, that's the next session uh, in a couple of days, uh, I'll be looking at, uh, we'll, we'll start looking at another discipline, probably prayer. And so uh, I want to discuss this morning, just challenge, just continue to challenge you and encourage you to grow strong in the word. Now, so this morning I'm talking about be transformed, be transformed by the word. So the primary aim of scripture is for us to get a revelation of Jesus Christ that will make us know him better and be transformed by this knowledge. You see, we don't read scripture uh, just so that we can uh, collect facts and uh, we don't memorize scripture so that we can just wow our friends and, and showcase uh, our knowledge of scripture. There, there, are, there are lots of people who know scripture. They know the logos. Uh, they know what's printed on these pages, but they, 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 they don't know God. You can know scripture. You can know the word. You can know the letter. And, uh, and you don't know God. In, um, you know, the Bible says that the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. So it is very important for any child of God to make sure that the word of God is not just letter to him, to make sure that what is written in your Bible is more than just letter. Okay. And uh, because letter kills, I've, I've, I've seen, in fact, there is so much letter going on in, in the body of Christ today. For example, when you see somebody who has received some truth of scripture, but is using that truth of scripture uh, in a divisive and destructive manner. Uh, this, is, this is an example of what the letter does. You see people who are ready to fight to defend their doctrines, but no change in their lives, no transformation, no love. You do not see the love of Christ being manifested in their lives. I see that you know, even, some, even with some people who emphasize the message of God's love uh, for mankind, you, you actually look at some and you don't see any love. You see, so to, to many people, it's just letter. And uh, so there is no life to it. It's like just talking about the power of God and just living at the level of just words. The Bible says in the, you know, it's uh, Second Corinthians. The Apostle Paul said the kingdom of God is not in word only, but in power also. It's in the demonstration of the spirit and power. So uh, just mere words, mere letter, are not enough. We need to go uh, deeper than that. We need to go further than, than simply having correct information. Having correct information is good. It's a good starting point. But like I said, I'd rather have um, uh, slightly incorrect information and a living relationship with God. Amen? Okay, so good doctrine is important that's why you need to be in scripture for yourself you need to open your bible for yourself you can't rely solely on your preachers to do that you can't rely solely on the national president to do that you can't rely solely on your pastors to do that you need to be in the word for yourself today in the body of christ most believers are starved most believers do not know scripture and it's creating uh the kind of things that we discussed uh, uh, during our, our session last last week, which Paul warned Timothy against. Okay, so be transformed. The primary aim of Scripture, I said, is revelation of Jesus Christ, and that that revelation of Jesus Christ will lead us into transformation. So let's get into Scripture. Second Corinthians chapter three and verse eighteen says, "We all, we with unveiled faces, are looking as in a mirror." at the glory of the Lord, and are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. And he says, uh, this is from the Lord, who is the Spirit. It is written somewhere else that, uh, uh, what am I doing? Okay, this is from the Lord, who is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. Now, listen, he says, 
with unveiled faces with unveiled faces now i want you to know that as a new testament believer as a born again child of god you do not have a veiled face in christ jesus your face is unveiled meaning that your eyes are open to the realities and to the beauty of of, of, of the glory of christ your eyes are open to the truth of scripture there is no child of god that does not possess in him or her the inherent ability to, con to, to comprehend, to understand the Word of God. Your face is unveiled. It's, it's, this is one point I want you to get because some of you think that the Word of God is difficult to understand. It is a lie. It's not true. The Word of God is not difficult to understand. The Bible says uh, this mystery is, is veiled for those who perish, you know. The word is, is veiled, it is not understood for those who perish. But for we who have believed, it is no longer a mystery, it has been revealed unto us. The, you know, the seals have been taken away, and we have ability. Every child of God has ability to understand every most important thing in Scripture. Now, let me say this before I move on. Anything, every uh, important truth in Scripture... The most important truths in Scripture do not need interpretation and are easy to understand. The most important truths in Scripture. For example, when you read uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, uh, which says that, uh, for by, by grace through faith are you saved and not by works. You know, this, is, this Scripture is revealing the medium uh, of salvation, the methodology of salvation. He says, by grace, through faith, not by works, so that no man should boast. It is the gift of God. It's a free gift from God. Do you need interpretation for that? No. You just need to take it as it is and you believe it. The most important truths in Scripture do not need interpretation. Now, listen. The, 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 the reason why some believers are held hostage by some man of God you know, or by some preachers is because some of these some of the preachers at times just present to you things that are written black and white in you, in your bibles but you don't read them and so some people can present to you things that are simply written in scripture and that do not even require interpretation that do not even require homiletics and hermeneutics that do not require apologetics that don't require any of those things they just require reading and believing that's all and so somebody will bring that that simple knowledge to you because they took the time and the pain to read and you did not take the time and the pain to read and they will make you a slave of them they will make you you know they will enslave you now please don't get me wrong it is the job of leaders it is the job of us because i'm one of them it's the job of us ministers of ministers of the word to spend a lot of time in the word so that we can bring it to you you know, with life and power is good. But listen, you need to go into the word for yourself and get basic truth yourself. You don't need a preacher to come and preach to you about the grace of God. You don't need somebody to tell you that you're saved by grace through faith. As a child of God, you needed, to, you needed somebody to tell you that before you got saved. But not, not now that you're saved. Not now that you are saved. Do you hear what I'm saying? You don't, you don't need somebody to come and tell you uh, that you are blessed in Christ. You should have read it in your, in your Bible before somebody told you that. Okay, So that when somebody comes and tells you what you have read in Scripture, it, 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 it strengthens you. It brings more power. It brings more revelation. But you already have a solid foundation. Okay, so it says with unveiled faces. So child of God. Your faces are not veiled concerning the Word of God. In the New Testament, our faces are not veiled concerning the Word of God. I want you to believe this. I want you to get this revelation. My face is not veiled. My eyes are not blinded. It is the eyes of those in the world that are blinded. If my eyes were still blinded, I wouldn't have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. But because I have believed... The Bible says that he has the prince of this world has blinded their eyes so that they will not see the light of the gospel and believe. So if I have believed, it means I am no longer among the blinded ones. If I have believed, it means my eyes have been opened and I've been able to see the light of the truth of God's love 
manifested in Jesus Christ. And so he says, uh, with unveiled faces, we're looking as in a mirror at the glory of the Lord. I want you to know that the word of God is like a mirror in which you see the glory of the Lord. You also see yourself in there, but you see yourself you know, uh, it, I, I don't want to spend time on this, but it's, an, it's another teaching, you know, on explaining what it really means for the Word of God to be a mirror. But as a mirror, you see two things there. You see the glory of the Lord, as, as we are told in this scripture of Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. You see the glory of the Lord, uh, and you also see yourself in that glory. Now, it's another teaching for another day, but basically this is what you see. A child of God is supposed to see glory in Scripture. I want you to know that uh, uh, the Scripture contain the expression of God's glory. From, from now on, whenever you open your Bible, just know that you have a dinner with glory. Just, you know, just have this in your mindset that I'm going to the Word, you know, to have an encounter with the glory of God. He says, we look at in a mirror. The Bible says that the man who reads the word or who, or who hears the word and uh, turns away, I think, it's, I think it's, it, it is written in the book of James. I think it's James who says this. He says that uh, the man who uh, gets the word and then forgets it as soon as his turn is back is like one man who looked, at in a, who looked into a mirror and immediately forgot uh, the image that he saw in there. So the word of God really is a mirror. He, James was saying that if when you forget and you don't conform to what you saw and heard in scripture, you're like a man who looked at a mirror and forgot what he saw immediately. He forgot, he forgot his image immediately. He forgot the picture that he saw in that mirror. And so uh, when this scripture here in 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, looking as in a mirror it is because indeed the word is a mirror the word is a mirror in which we see the glory of the lord and we see ourselves in that glory and so he says uh looking at that mirror the glory of the lord as in a mirror now i want you to get this point before i move on you're looking at the glory when you open the pages of the of, of the bible it's a glory encounter i want you to get this mindset the word of god is not a waste whenever i open my bible to read it whether i read it for five minutes or for one hour it is you know the the, the scriptures that i'm seeing have hidden glory within them i want you to know that the word of god is not just words what you see written in the in your bible is simply a written expression of the living christ he says we see the glory of God and we are being transformed. He says, as we look, we are being transformed. Now, this is my main point here this morning. The purpose of your going into the word, the primary aim of scripture is transformation. The primary aim of you looking into that mirror of God's word is transformation. It is transformation. Now you're transformed by getting to know him and by getting to know what he's done for you. But it is transformation. It is so sad to, to, um, to look at the state of the church today. And very few believers nowadays are transformed. I mean, transformation is something that has become uh, such a scarce commodity among believers. But this is the number one thing that scripture is supposed to produce in you. Scripture is supposed to, to produce transformation. In, in, in the lives of many people, uh, Scripture produces a, a big head, or Scripture produces all kinds of things. Uh, in some people, Scripture produces power, you know, based on the revelation that they get. But the number one thing, you need to be transformed. Transformed into what? Into the same image, from glory to glory, from one level to the next. You see? And uh, so in, in Romans chapter 12, verse, verse 2, it says, Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may be able to discern what is the good, the pleasing, and the perfect will of God. It says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And what renews your mind? It is your exposure to the Word of God. Transformation is what you have to 
be looking at. It's what you have to, to, to be desiring. It has to be your desire when you read scripture. It says, Lord, I don't want to just read scripture. Now, I want you to develop faith, some faith uh, in this regard. And I want to give you a couple of, of, of tips on how you need to approach the word of God so that it will produce the right results in your life. The word of God contains expressions and snapshots of the glory of the Lord. And your exposure to these expressions and snapshots are supposed to produce transformation in your life. So this means that you need to change the way you read and study the word. Okay, so I will not go into details of, of how to study and things like that. We can discuss that in, in some of our in some of our programs but let me just say this you need to change the way you read and let me quickly uh, uh, drop a few tips and uh, and we'll be done for this morning it says be free from the number one thing is free yourself from the performance mentality I hope that all of you understand that when we talk about discipline it's not about you know or trying to earn anything from God discipline does not earn us anything from God discipline enables us to demonstrate what God has freely given us by the grace, you know, by, by, by his grace. Jesus finished the work on, his cro on the cross. His work is finished. You know, we have received a complete package through the work that he completed on the cross. And so our job is to work out what he has worked inside of us. Okay. The Bible says, now work out your salvation with fear and trampling it didn't say work for it okay so discipline is never about working for something that god will give us discipline is about working out what he has put inside of us the bible says that uh not unto him was able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us so his power works in us we need to put it out we need to bring it out and this same power uh, will, will not work for somebody, will not be demonstrated in the life of the believer who does not uh, subject himself to discipline to some extent. Okay, so, uh, so number one, be free from the performance mentality. Okay, I don't, you know, the fact that I want to push you into the word should not put you in a place where uh, you begin to think that, uh, uh, that it's about earning anything from God. You don't do that. Okay, you don't, we can't earn anything from God. It is all a free gift. It is all by His grace. Amen. And uh, number two, I need you need to read the scripture knowing that it's a conversation with God. Read scripture as if it's conversation with God. When, when you're reading scripture, just know that God is speaking to you. And that something is happening to your spirit. You may not be, you may not be aware. You may not realize exactly what is being done in your spirit, in, in you know, in your mind. You may not know it exactly at that time. But just always approach Scripture with that faith. I have so much faith in Scripture. That Scripture is so powerful that even when I don't understand a passage, just because I have read, I believe something has happened to my life. I believe that that that. Reading scripture is always a conversation with God and it's always an encounter with Jesus Christ. I want you to perceive it like that. The Bible calls Jesus himself the word of God. In John chapter 1, it says the word was made flesh and came and dwelt among, um, among men. So Jesus is the word. When I go into the word, I go into Jesus. When I begin to study scripture, I begin to study Jesus. Jesus himself said the scripture testify about me. So when I study scripture, I'm, I'm not just studying a text. I am studying Jesus. I'm getting to know my Lord and Savior better. So it's very important to approach the scripture with this kind of mindset. It will change it. I mean, it will make a huge, it will make a huge difference. It will, it will make a huge difference. Now, it's uh, next is uh, number three, read scripture with a desire to know the Lord and to experience Him and what He says. There are lots of people who, you know, when they ask to read scriptures, they just begin to read it because they need to read. But you will get much more out of scripture if you approach it with a strong desire to know God, 
to have a fresh revelation of Jesus Christ and to experience him and what he says. You must read scripture with a desire to experience what he says. When scripture says, now these signs shall follow those who believe in my name, they will uh, uh, cast out devils. They will speak in new tongues. They will lay hands on the sick and the sick will, shall recover. And if they drink any deadly beverage, it shall not harm them. When you read that in your Bible, you must approach the scripture with a desire to have this thing become your experience in one dimension or the other. But it, you, you need to approach it. Nothing you don't desire will ever be your experience. If you, don't, if you don't desire it, it will not be your experience. So make a commitment that, Father, I am going to desire everything that is good, everything that is perfect that I discover in Scripture. I'm going to desire your truth to become my reality. I remember I made a prayer some, you know, many years back. And uh, during my university years, I just took one year, I took a commitment one day and I said, Father, uh, as I'll be reading your word, as I'll be studying the scripture, uh, you remember in, in one of the former audios I, how I told you that I would spend as a student hours in scripture every day and, uh, you know, three hours every day. And, uh, and, 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 and I said, one day I told the Lord, I said, Father, every, I, want, I want to do everything I see in Scripture. You know, and I, wanted, I, I, I so much wanted God to, to work on my heart, to work on my character and things like that. Back then, I wasn't so much interested in, you know, manifesting the power of God and things like that, even though some of those things were beginning to happen in the form of healing and things like that. Now, living in holiness is already manifesting the power of God, okay? It is power to live above sin. So power is not just healing the sick, you know, raising the dead and all of that. But that is another aspect of the power of God, which is very important. And until you desire something, you won't get it. It will not be your experience. You know, you may experience it just... Once in a while, you know, accidentally, incidentally, but it will not be a daily powerful experience that you have with God. So I, I so much desired, you know, for my character to be to be transformed and to be perfected and to be, you know, to just be worked on that God gave me just that. God gave me just that, I, you know. I can confidently say that I have very few character issues, you know. I used to say I don't have any character problems at all, but you know, you can you can make such an assertion. Now so but but what what am I saying? I am saying that if you desire it so badly, if you really want something out of scripture, you get it. Another thing that I wanted so bad from scripture was to know Jesus. I, I didn't want to just know the Bible. I didn't just want to know uh, to, to, to have great messages to preach. No, I wanted to know God. I wanted to know God. I wanted to know him. I wanted to know him. You know, like Paul says, that I may know him. I wanted to know God. And, and I believe that God is faithful. And uh, he helped me in that regard. And he's still helping me in that regard. So what you want from scripture is what you will get. If all you want is to get your head full, that's, that's all you'll get. Okay, but if you want to experience the word of God, if you want to experience the power of God, if you want to know God, if you want to, to see his face, you know, that is what you will get. Okay, so next tip, you must read scripture with certainty and expectation. You must know the power of scripture. You must know, you must expect something to happen to your life. In fact, this is almost the same uh, point as the previous one. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 that without faith, it is impossible to please God. But he who comes to him must first believe that he is and that he is the reward of them that diligently seek him. Now, oh, this is one of my favorite scriptures and I talked about that in Aslam. Uh, uh, I, I mentioned something about that which is very powerful in the, uh, in the message uh, on destiny shaping prayer. So if you have not listened to, to it, listen to it. It's, it's available freely on SoundCloud. Okay, so, but um, what was I saying? Yes, without, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And he who comes to him must first believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So God wants you to know. 
that as you go into the word, you're getting something out of it. You must, you must approach the word with that kind of faith and that kind of expectation. It's the same kind of faith and expectation you must approach prayer with. And it's the same thing that I'm asking you to do here. This has really been life-changing for me. I so much believe in the power of God's word that I, have, I always make this confession. That Father, even the one I don't understand, even while I'm reading, uh, you know, uh, Leviticus uh, or some some portions of scripture, you know, even while I'm reading uh, some genealogies and it's just names, I believe that the Spirit of God is working something in me, you know, because I, I, I believe, I believe that the Word of God is so powerful that it can work in me even before I begin to understand, you, you see? And, and when you approach the Word with that kind of faith, your understanding is, is you know, it, it just opens up more powerfully. In the things of the Spirit, you believe first and you understand later. So one, one great key to, re, to, to, to Bible revelation is believing. Believe first. There are some things that you, will ne- that you will never understand and be able to explain until you believe. So just believe first. And uh, you just discovered that you begin to understand some things you could not understand before. Amen. So um, now last thing, because we need to end, we need to stop this video. Now, these are morning, uh, morning exhortations, morning audios. It's not full length messages with too many details. So we have to, to, to pause it here. Uh, so let me just give you this last tip on how to approach the word of God. Speak the word. The last one is speak the word until it transitions from information to revelation, from head to heart. You see, you need to declare the word. You need to declare the word. That's what we saw in in what what God told Joshua in Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. He says, uh, this word of the law will not depart from your mouth. In other words, you will speak it. You will declare it. You will confess it. He didn't say, will not depart from your heart. He said, from your mouth. So speaking the word has virtue. It has, it has power that is released while you do that. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the more you hear, and sometimes you need your own voice to get yourself to hear. So the more you hear, uh, the more you will believe. The more you hear, the more faith will well up from the inside of you. And uh, speaking the word will help you get the word from the level of information to the level of revelation. You know, everybody knows the scripture. He who is in you is, is greater than he who is in the world. You know, but a lot of believers are still afraid of small demons. They are, you know, they still start uh, sweating in the night when they hear some cockroaches, you know, uh, making some noise uh, inside the ceiling. If they had the revelation that this scripture says, if they, as you begin to, to, to declare it and, and say it and, and recite it and rehearse it, this thing, the, the, the information slowly transforms into revelation. It slowly moves from head knowledge to heart knowledge. And only then does it release the power that that scripture says it, 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 it is going to release. And finally, in Psalm 91, verse 1 to 2, uh, David makes a statement. He says, I will say of the Lord, I will say of the Lord in verse 2. He is my refuge and my fortress. What do you say of the Lord? So speak the word. Speak what God says about you constantly and speak what God says about himself. What the word says about God and what the word says about you. How about you? How about you? How about you?